Good afternoon, guys. So today I am starting my intermediate series. Right now I'm going to be going into data structure topics and I'll be going into the different types of arrays and different containers that Julia has. And as you can see, I am in the REPL right now because just like before, I believe the REPL is a good place to visualize these containers so you can see how they work, see how they're allocated. And then I'll be going more into scripting in the future videos. So let's start up here. Now, in my previous series, I mainly just talked about arrays, and sometimes I would call them lists, but all lists are arrays. Me calling them lists is just my Python background coming out, but they're all arrays. Now, there is, you've seen me define these before, and I'm just gonna do another one again, so you can see again. So this is going to be a float64 array, you can just define it, and here you go. So two rows, three columns, and all these are undefined, and you can see that these are essentially zero, and this actually is zero. Okay, and now Julia has these other constructors called matrix and vector. Now a matrix may sound different but ultimately it's also just an array and I'm going to show that as well. All right. And you can see here, right? It's, it's an array also a two by three and it's constructed with ints in this case and two rows, three columns. Now the main difference between a matrix and an array is an array is a general term, meaning I can make this another dimension. I can go like that. Now you can see, and now it has a third dimension. It's talking about all the values per side. And I can add another one. Now it's going to get super weird. I'm going to make it two. All right. See, it's, it's just showing all the different layers. Well, a matrix can't do that. A matrix is only a two by two or a two dimensional. So it only has rows and columns. And then we also have a vector. And this one I can just define as empty, but let's, let's also call it n64, the undef, and I'm going to give it five elements. Cool. And a vector is the same idea as a matrix. So a matrix is rows and columns, a vector is just a column. But they're all just arrays and they all inherit from the arching overarching container of an array class. All right, so that's all arrays, and arrays are pretty much the container that you work with when you're looking at ranges, looking at all these different values, when you're setting up data, they're, they're all usually arrays. Now, another container is a tuple. Now, you've seen me work with tuples before, and they're the ones defined in parentheses. Three, like that. And now if I do type of t, you get a tuple of three ints. Now the main difference between a tuple and an array is tuples can't be changed. If I go back to a, I wanted to change a one, one, I think this is four dimensional right now, to that. It could do that, no problem. I'll put a and it'll show that this one value has been changed. If I wanted to change my tuple, tuple, that's the first one. I wanted to change that to three. See, it's going to produce an error because tuples are considered immutable or unchangeable. And that's kind of a safety, a safety precaution. Sometimes you're passing variables that shouldn't be changed. And when you want to make sure that you're not going to change them or other developers are not going to change them, you define them within a tuple, and when they get these values and they try to alter them in some way, they can't do that. And now another type of tuple is a named tuple. I'm going to call it NT. Let's go to the top. NT, and that is pretty similar, but instead we're going to define everything like this. B equals 3.4, and C equals hello. All right, 
and you can see it defined the tuple, and now they're defined in terms of these variables. So this can still be accessed like this. If you want to do that, it will access the first value. I want to look at the second one, it produces that. But you can also, if you know the keys, which are these, these are the keys A, B, and C, you can call it by that. I can do nt.a, and it'll call that, nt.c, and it'll produce hello. And if you don't know what the keys are, you can look at them and then output all the keys. If you just want to see what the values are, you can do that and it produces that. So same idea as a tuple. These are immutable. You can't change these values, but this adds a little bit more construction. Maybe you want them all to have keywords. You want to say something. This is the rows. This is the columns. This is the longitude. This is latitude, all that stuff. So it allows for a little bit more organization. And now the last container I'm going to go into is called a dictionary. So in here, I'm going to have a order 3.4. I'm going to have B equal to one. I'm going to put a comma. And then I'm going to have C equal to A. I'm going to take a moment. Okay. Now you can see it did some stuff. Now a dictionary is kind of like a named tuple, but dictionaries can be altered. And you can see I did a lot of different things here. This is a string. I gave it double quotations, but I can still access it. E, I'll produce that. And if I wanted to change it to four, it can go to that. If I wanted to access the char one, I have to call it like that. And I pointed it to 3.4. And then you can also see for C, I actually gave it an array. And I gave it that previous array that we defined. So dictionaries actually just have access to other, other types of variables as well. And these are all different, right? This is a float, this is an int, this is an array that's being given, and this is actually a variable, I'm just passing it. And you can be more explicit if, if I wanted to say any, any, this is for the, actually let me do it up here. It's any, any, and then just like before, I would have defined all that stuff. But this is saying I want my keys to be any type of value, and I want my values to be any type of value. If you wanted to be more constructed, maybe you just wanted strings as keys and you want your values just to be floats, then this is this is what you'd do, and you'd start naming everything off. Okay, those are the main data structures I'm gonna go through for this video. I want to show what these values look like and maybe clarify the whole array class because there are vectors and matrices and sometimes they're called lists but lists are all just arrays and vectors and matrices are all also just arrays. Okay, and that's pretty much the end of this video and then we'll continue to the next.